everybody. You know what I thought would be fun to do? Something I haven't done in nine years. I wanna make a bandsaw box. But first, I gotta change out the blade on this saw. And I've only put the blade on here once, but I bought this saw, so this will be interesting. Well, like any bandsaw, you gotta take this table off too. So once you get that pin out, then it remove the top. Now I can take this off and slide it through that slot. Then this blade guard just slides off of here. It's not attached in any way. Next thing I need to do is release the tension on these two wheels. This knob is for tracking and that was the one that once you set the blade in there, that'll tilt the wheel forward and backward a little bit so that it rides right in the center of the wheel. But right now I just need to loosen this one and this is the one that creates the tension between the two wheels. So let me loosen that. All right, so that should slide off of there now. Okay. So what I'm doing here is replacing this is a 3 8 inch blade and I want to put a smaller blade on here and I've had a quarter inch blade for a long long time and I've never even taken it out of the package so I'll use that one. The thinner the blade you can use for a bandsaw box the better. An eighth inch blade would be ideal but I don't have any of those. Storing bandsaw blades can be kind of tricky. What you need to do is learn how to coil them or you can just hang them on the wall like this, that's fine. But if you wanna coil them, get some gloves so that it doesn't cut your hand all up and then you just stand stand on the blade like this. And then what you wanna do is you can like twist your hands over like this. You twist it once and then what you do is just twist it one more time. And then you can just kind of push this whole bunch down and it'll sort of start to form into into that coil. It takes some fussing with to even these out. Obviously you don't want to do this with shorts on. But with enough finesse, <laughs> you can tell it's been a while since I've changed the bandsaw blade. There you go. You can get it into a nice coil like that. There's my new blade. The blades come all coiled up the exact same way that I coiled that one up. Also, if you're not used to band saws and you've never done this before, you gotta be careful when you're <laughs> uncoiling these things. Usually what I do is I just stand back and just let it do what it's gonna do like that. Just let it fly open. There's probably, there's probably a better way to do it, I don't know. You should probably wear gloves too. I didn't have them on that time. So this is really the trickiest part of the entire procedure is not just getting the blade on to the wheels, but getting it centered on the wheels. So it just has to fit through everything, it fits behind this little guard here, over the top. And I guess it goes without saying, just make sure that the teeth are going in the right direction. It always cuts down. Okay, I've got it basically in place there and now I can start to increase this tension on this wheel. In other words, all I'm doing is this wheel is just sliding up to create that tension. Don't worry about the other knob, the tracking knob just yet. All right, with that fairly well tensioned, now what I can do is just start to spin this wheel around. And the whole name of the game here is you wanna get the, the blade right in the center, the crown of the tire of, of the wheel. The tire is slightly curved on top and that's what helps keep it centered. So what you can do there is, I'm gonna adjust this tracking and you'll see what goes. When I turn this tracking knob, you see how the wheel comes in and out? So if the blade is, seems like it's too close to the front, then you can just tip the blade, I guess, backward a little bit. You just play with it and you'll, you'll figure it out. It takes a lot of kind of fussing with. So what I'm looking for here is that I can make lots of rotations with this and it stays pretty centered. It takes real small adjustments on that tracking 
to move the blade forward and backward. All right, so then once I've got it looking pretty centered, I'll just increase the tension. And a lot of times increasing that tension will also cause it to get off track a little bit. And you know, I don't know if this is just my experience with my band saws. I've only had two band saws, this one and then the rigid that I had before it. The rigid saw was a really good saw, but it also took a really long time to get it set up. Um, so don't, I mean, don't really look at my experience as probably normal. I don't know if it is or not. I suppose if you have a really good bandsaw, this whole process might be a lot easier. And don't look to me as any kind of an expert on the bandsaw. And you know who's really good on a bandsaw is Duresta. I, don't, I, I think he still does bandsaw stuff. I know he's doing a lot of like computerized stuff now, but he used to have some really cool bandsaw projects that he would make. So you might want to check that out. One of the biggest questions people always have about band saws is how tight, how much tension should there be on the blade? And you know, I've seen a lot of different methods that kind of measure the amount of deflection, or some people actually even listen to the blade to see how much tension it has. And I don't know, I, I have no real technique there other than I like it to be really tight, so I, I really crank up the tension a lot. I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but I've never had any problems like really getting it nice and tight. So once you've got that blade in, there's a couple other things you need to set. These are guide blocks that just grab the side of the blade. So what you want to do with those is you want to adjust them so that they're almost touching the blade, but they're not, but they're also not on the teeth. So let me see if I can get a good angle here. So this will slide forward and backward, so I want it to be right about here. So it's not all the way grabbing the teeth, but just on the back part of the blade. So these two blocks will just provide pressure onto the side of that blade, but you don't want them clamped down there and preventing the blade from moving. So you just want to put them next to the blade and then just back it off a little bit, like the thickness of a sheet of paper. Or you can buy like cool blocks they're called, which is like some sort of a plastic material that you can press right against the blade and then you just replace them when they get worn out. That's what I had on my old saw. So then this guide bearing right here, you just adjust it, whoops, not that, like this, so when it touches the back of the blade. You don't want it back here, because then the blade would deflect backwards. So you want it, it's just gonna support it and keep it forward. So just until that's just barely touching like that, and then I can lock it in position. And then you've got the same thing you've got to do down here on the lower part of the blade. This is the part of the blade that's underneath the table. So it's always easiest to set this now before you put that table in place. So I'll set those. This is also a good opportunity to adjust the table, make sure that it's square with the blade. I always feel like this guard here is the most important one to have in place because that whole side of the blade is completely exposed if you're working on the saw. So always make sure you have that one in place. So I plugged it in. I want to just kind of test it and make sure that it's running okay and that it's not tracking weird. So it looks pretty good. It looks like it's staying this pretty centered. It could come forward a little bit. I don't think I need to bother with it though. This is a 14 inch bandsaw and if you are in the market for a bandsaw, I think that's a good size to get. You could do just about anything with it. 
but it's not those overly, you know, huge ones. It's going to cost you a fortune. <clears throat> and what that refers to is the distance between the blade and the upright over here. That's how much space you have. But a 14 inch bandsaw will also give you a lot more vertical space so that you can ideally resaw boards. And it's of course also good for cutting curves, but anything smaller than that, like I think they have like these little nine inch or 10 inch bandsaws and there's just not a whole lot you can do with them. There's just not enough power to them. I'll do a quick test drive here and see how well the new blade cuts. Well, I think that's gonna be even tighter than I really need it to be for my bandsaw box. So that's good, it seems to cut really well. I really wasn't intending for this video to be all about changing the blade on the bandsaw, but as I got to making this, I thought, well, maybe this would be helpful to somebody, I don't know. Tomorrow, I'll start in on the bandsaw box. That'll be a lot of fun. Before then, if you do have a bandsaw and use it a lot, leave your tips and tricks down in the comments. I'd love to hear those. I don't use a, a bandsaw a whole lot, so I appreciate any advice you have to give me. Thanks everybody, I'll see you tomorrow.